since 1978, Maldives has been a development success story of World Bank. In the areas of education and health, the country has flourished with the partnership with World Bank. Nevertheless, in the future and currently, the two parties are on having ongoing discussions and developmental efforts in areas such as climate change and other forums as well. Today, we'll talk about that and more. I'm Ismail Azim, and this is 75-0. As mentioned earlier, today we'll talk about the contributions of World Bank in the past and the future contributions as well. For this, we have a very distinguished two guests in our program today. Uh, for that, we have uh, Mr. Ferris Haddad Zeros, uh, the director, the country director, Maldives, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and South Asia. Ms. Chiyo Kanda, country manager, Maldives, Sri Lanka, and South Asia. Welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you, Smile. Thank you. Uh, to start with, uh, Mr. Ferris, how has uh, the World Bank, or to, we will we'll go in detail, but what, what is World Bank we have to know? Or can you uh, give us a brief introduction and overview of World Bank, its major targets and aspirations? Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Ismail. And it's, uh, it's good to be back in the Maldives. This is my second visit. Uh, always happy to be in your beautiful country. Um, let me, there's a lot that can be said about the World Bank, but I'd rather, uh, you know, in explaining it or in trying to sort of highlight it, talk a little bit about the relationship with the Maldives. Uh, the World Bank is a group of organizations. We're actually five organizations that focus in a number of areas. Um, it is a bank that is owned, and it is actually a collective and a cooperative of all the countries, including the Maldives. So you are a member of the, uh, of the World Bank, and you're an owner of the World Bank. And we focus on a number of things, but if I could distill it, simplify it into two issues, we are about working as a trusted partner to governments, such as the government of the Maldives and the people of Maldives, on two main goals. That is eradication of extreme poverty and also reduction of poverty and achievement of shared prosperity. And shared prosperity is about growth. It's about sustainable growth, whether it's financially sustainable or uh, environmentally sustainable. And it is about growth with dignity, growth with empowerment to all people in the country. This is where we're about, and we're here to support the government of the Maldives, which has done tremendously well. If you look at the storyline of this country from the 80s, where it was one of the 20 poorest countries in the world, to where you are now, it's, it's a wonderful story. And I'm happy to say that the World Bank has been privileged to be a part of that story. And we look forward to, inshallah, continu continuing that together. Uh, Ms. Chiu, uh, currently we are facing a hard year. The 2020 is a hard year, especially due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, what are your projections? Uh, how do you see the economic situation of the South Asia and especially Maldives? Thank you, Ismail. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, this is my first ever uh, visit to Maldives. It's a beautiful country and then I'm really looking forward to uh, working with, uh, with you and your colleagues. Um, the, as you said, the, uh, this uh, COVID pandemic was a surprise to, uh, to us all, and it's a quite unprecedented year uh, that hit the, the globally, not only of Maldives. So um, the economically, the, uh, the, since the Maldives has a, 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 the tourism is a, as a major industry, both uh, public sector and private sector depends a lot on tourism. So COVID means that that, that uh, major income source uh, plummeted. So uh, the, it's going to be uh, 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 the, the difficult to uh, the get back to the past, but then I, I, I believe uh, there's a uh, the strong potential to uh, um, once, once the uh, COVID is uh, under control and then the vaccine is on the way. So uh, the, I think the uh, Maldives has a, a great potential to, to Go back to the tour, uh, t not only the tourism, but then diversify into the, the fisheries as well as the, uh, the agriculture to see, uh, the, and so that uh, they can have a more uh, inclusive growth path very soon. Uh, Mr. Ferris, you have mentioned and then you have given an overview of World Bank and mm. uh, 
the more different situation in the World Bank too. But we need to know a bit more in such a program. Uh, how is the relation between Maldives mm -hmm. and the World Bank? And how has Maldives progressed in the past years? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I mean, the relationship, I have to say, is, is a long-standing one. Um, it is a deep one. And I think there's no better evidence I can give you of the importance of the Maldives to the World Bank than the fact that we're actually sitting here uh, across the table. Uh, unfortunately, with the COVID environment, it's a very difficult environment. Travel is quite uh, constrained, not easy. Uh, I, as a country director, uh, have taken over uh, this new position about five months ago. And Chiu, the same day as myself, yet we're here in the Maldives. I think some of the few, 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 few people uh, to have been early arrivals, also, although we're seeing quite a rise in the number of tourists. And the reason we've come is to actually signal that. One is that uh, the Maldives is a very important member and partner to the World Bank. And there was no better uh, reflection of that than us coming here and meeting with His Excellency, the President. We've had excellent meetings with cabinet members, His Excellency also, ministers of finance, planning, housing, fisheries, from across the board. They have been extremely productive. You know, development is a long-term endeavor. And it's an uh, endeavor that one does not take in isolation. We have been working together over these years in a number of sectors, uh, education, health, uh, you name it, a number of sectors, and now we're going into a very important sector. We have been and continue to go into renewable energy and things of that sort. So, as I had said earlier, if you look at the economic narrative of the Maldives from the 80s, to, certainly before then, but let's go from the 80s until, you know, when it was one of the 20 poorest countries, till 2012, I think, if I'm not mistaken, where you went into uh, middle-income country status and then upper middle income country status and things of that sort. I think the story has been a very positive one. Um, look at the indicators in terms of access, universal access to education, child mortality, health, everything. Maldives has been going on an upward trend and, and this is very important. Um, and that one, not only the World Bank, but other development partners are, have been very fortunate to be part of, you, uh, part of the journey with you. Now we find ourselves in the COVID world. And soon we will find ourselves, inshallah, with the vaccine and everything in a post-COVID world. Um, it has, I don't need to say that, it, uh, to, to tell you or anybody that it has been a very difficult time. And while we are optimistic that at the end we will come back to a better world economically, etc., it will not be overnight. We are still traveling through this period. And I think the recovery we all hope will be sooner than later, but this is going to be another year or two where we go back towards the path of recovery. This is where we need to work together as much as possible to continue to, first and foremost, ensure that everybody is given every sort of help to be safe. So focusing on people's lives, saving lives is a number one priority, providing relief. But then at the same time, starting from day one to focus on what are the things that you have to look at in an economy in order to trigger recovery and sustainable recovery. What do you need to restructure? What do you need to do? What sacrifices you need to be make? Every country, and you know in the case of the Maldives in terms of tourism receipts, we're seeing an increase in tourism now. That is a very good sign. It's very optimistic. But last year you had two million tourists. That's a lot. And this year, unfortunately, is behind us. The next year we hope to get to two, we hope to get to three to four. But it's going to take a while. So what is it that we have to do now? What sacrifices do we have to make? Not only you as a Maldivian, I do, given my country, she does. Everybody has to do to make sure that this Maldivian boat sails in the direction of where it wants to go. But it's going to be choppy waters. And sometimes we have to slow down a little bit when the waters are choppy. Yeah. In such a fora, we have to discuss about the focus areas. Uh, previously, the main focuses were the health and the education, as you mentioned earlier. But now, the environment, uh, the climate change, is uh, coming as uh, something that Maldives is coming to the forefront and advocating about it. How uh, is, has a World Bank assisted in this endeavor? And what are the focus areas that you would be helping and assisting Maldives in the future? Thanks. Um, Currently, the World Bank has uh, nine operations uh, of total about 148 million dollars. And that actually uh, uh, covers not only health and education, uh, but also uh, urban development, uh, marine resources, fisheries, um, 
the climate resilience. So it's quite co uh, covering uh, uh, diverse areas. The current World Bank program is uh, uh, under the umbrella of a country partnership framework since uh, the 2016 uh, to this year. The, that is to promote uh, the economic opportunities as well as to uh, increase the resilience uh, against such a climate, uh, climate change and also to uh, strengthen the fiscal sustainability. So uh, the, uh, the, this year, the COVID uh, has uh, uh, also made a shift to the, the re response, of course, in that after adapt to the, the, the changes in sudden, uh, uh, the different in, in the landscape. So uh, we did uh, um, uh, quickly uh, came up with, uh, with uh, two projects. One is a health project to an emergency response and health, uh, opera uh, health operations. That is a $7.3 million. And also uh, uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank uh, uh, co-financed the same amount. And uh, in addition, we have uh, uh, the income support project to, uh, to support the, the those who lost the jobs temporarily so that they can have uh, some uh, a temporary income. So the soon next year, we are starting a, a consultations for a new uh, round of a country partnership framework. So I'm looking forward to uh, uh, having a consultations with the uh, governments as well as the other development partners and the private sectors, civil societies, to see where the World Bank can help uh, and then fill in the, the gaps to, to uh, promote not only the uh, recovery of, from the COVID, but also uh, the, to build back better and greener uh, so that the, the Maldives can stand in, uh, the, the longer term uh, growth path and, and therefore more resilient economy. South Asia is an emerging economy. It has a, a group of countries that we can say is, has the potential to be, make it big in the economical aspect. Uh, in such a, 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 a way, uh, we have to have facilitation of networks or uh, a World Bank, such, uh, such, such organizations should facilitate uh, countries like Maldives in uh, making these networks. How uh, has a World Bank uh, worked together with Maldives in this aspect? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, that's, a very, uh, that's a very good question, Ismail. I mean, as you said, the potential South Asia region as, as, as a region is, is quite big and it's quite a big contributor to the global economy. Also, the growth in South Asia has been quite, quite impressive over the years. There's a huge potential, huge driving force. This is home to a big chunk of the world's population and economy. But it's an unfinished agenda. There's a lot more that we need to do. Um, one area that's really important where I think we have an unfinished agenda is this issue of regional integration. If you look at the region, we are actually probably one of the most or the least integrated regions in a number of areas. So in terms of trade, intra-regional trade, things of that sort, addressing collective action issues, things of that sort, unfortunately, there's a lot more to be done. And I think this goes to what you are saying, and this is the very important part about moving forward about the post-COVID world, and that is a focus on this idea of resilient growth and resilient recovery. You may find this very hard to believe, but I would actually say that amidst all the difficulties, all the terrible loss of life that we've seen in COVID, et cetera, there are glimmers of hope, things that we can do differently. It has opened for us this COVID period, and it's hard to believe, it's hard to feel it, but it's hope, opened opportunities for us to do things better, to do things greener and to do things bluer in the case of Maldives. So this is a time as we're looking into relief, as we're looking into recovery, can we do things differently than we have done in the past? One area is regional integration, whether it's about trade, facilitating trade across the countries, that's one. The other is issues of equal importance, the issue of river uh, plastics, you know, Maldives is a very, very important player and a partner in this issue and this initiative of reducing plastics in the, in the ocean and the blue economy. Can we do something more as a region, South Asia, with our neighbors, things of that sort, to address this issue? Because it is a collective action issue. Uh, issues related to uh, travel, tourism, opening up. One of the s stories that we've seen now as a result of COVID, the issue of tourism, you know, these tourism bubbles and things of that sort. Necessity has allowed us and has forced us to look at opportunities where we should be doing things differently. And we have shown great innovation as people and as countries in the face of a terrible epidemic. So my, my hope is that we don't forget this challenge and we don't forget to take, uh, uh, you know, take advantage of it. We should be looking at addressing our trade 
bottlenecks to trade. Often they are not infrastructure, often they're procedures. Uh, in areas outside the Maldives, let's, you know, and, and related to the Maldives, the issue of energy, you know, is this an opportunity for the Maldives to continue moving towards renewable energy for both environmental and financial reasons? There's a lot of opportunities for to do things. Addressing the blue economy, this is a time where we can pivot also not only the tourism sector, but many of the policies towards environmental sustainability, making sure these plastics are completely addressed in terms of, you know, ocean economies and things of that sort. There's a lot that can be done, but now is the time to take advantage of it, to sort of dig amongst the rubble and really, really extract the opportunities. The current administration of Ibrahim Mohamed Saleh has an approach of decentralization, mm -hmm. which is very key when uh, developing such a country with uh, a diverse and, uh, let's say, we are, we are not in one land. We, mm -hmm. we, uh, we have uh, to be decentralized to mm -hmm. develop the whole country. But to do that, we need to have a strong bond with the organizations, the private sector as well. Mm -hmm. How has this bond progressed over the years uh, with the World Bank? How is World Bank working with such a uh, private organization and other entities? As, uh, thank you for the question. Um, the, well, first of all, the, the Maldives is called a small island development state, but it's actually uh, huge uh, in terms of uh, the area it covers. I was uh, uh, so uh, um, surprised at how ex extensive uh, the, from the north to the south, I think, over 1,000 kilometers. So it does, uh, I think, make sense to have a decentralized uh, way of management in some way because there's connectivity is a key. The, and then plus the, 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 unfortunately, the usual economy of scale that the, 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 the non-island country has is more difficult, and then any infrastructure like uh, the water, uh, the the energy. So you have to really build in a different way. So uh, the I think the the having the some regional hubs and the uh, strength and the capacity and the, the way to manage differently does I think make sense. The so in in that in that sense the uh, private sector's role is quite impo important. Uh, although the uh, the summer. The public, public and private uh, combination is, uh, I think, always key because the, the, there's a public aspect. The, there's a, the, 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 in some areas that the, there's a more like a beat the public transport, for instance, uh, there, there may, be, may not be a commercial uh, profit uh, uh, sufficiently. At the same time, then uh, the, uh, go the government can take uh, advantage of the in innovative, uh, uh, the, pri you know, the private sector to have a, a good partnership. So. Uh, I think the uh, the with the uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, as we plan with the government how to uh, support the uh, the government's efforts to develop, develop regionally and then more uh, decentralized uh, capacity and the, the way to manage, that I like to uh, see the the where we can support where it makes sense to uh, for the the role of the public sector as well as the the where the private sector can come in. I think if I can add, no, thank you, uh, if it's okay, uh, Ismail, if I can add to this, and thanks, Chiu, I mean, agreeing with what Chiu, uh, Chiu was saying and, 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 and building upon that. I mean, at the end of the day, when we talk about regionalization, decentralization, what's the end game? This is not the end in and of itself, it's a means towards an end. The end at the end of the day is to provide basic services, universal services, and opportunities to the people throughout the Maldives. A vast archipelago, almost, you know, 1,800 islands, if I'm not mistaken, of which 200, 190 islands are, are inhabited. So the issue is how do you bring opportunity to them? How do you bring jobs to the young population? How do you bring services? You know, and then when you look at Mali, a beautiful city, and now this very impressive uh, development in Hulu, Mali, that's actually trying to address to a large extent this issue. But clearly there's an urbanization uh, 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 pressure there. And there's a lot of social and other, you know, the housing pressure and things of that sort, which makes this perhaps unsustainable over the long term. You cannot have the entire population of the, of the Maldives coming to basically two islands. So the idea is how to create in these poles opportunities for jobs, for important uh, so services, education, health, etc. And I think that is very important. So that, I think there's universal agreement one needs to do that. Then the question becomes, in order to do that, First, you have to have a minimum level of standard of services and transport. 
So, you know, if before you regionalize and decentralize, you should have an infrastructure that allows you to be able to do that, to allow for people to feel comfortable enough to try to seek their means and to seek their aspirations in these places. So I think the issue is, as with everything, it makes sense. The issue is how to develop that narrative, that storyline. So then the prioritization, particularly now in this post-COVID period, where we have all of us, every single country in the world, no country is immune from the need to take action, make sacrifices. One cannot do all the projects one wants to do uh, over the coming year or two. Inshallah, over the long term, we will get everything done. But over the next years where economies are recovering, where revenues are recovering, where tourists are starting to trickle in, one has to make decisions, temporal decisions. What do we do now? And so the idea is to develop, the, develop that narrative. What is important to us? What is our economic storyline? You have that. And we were very happy with uh, you know, the meetings with His Excellency, the President, the government, to see that there is a vision. The issue now is how we can, this is my challenge for us, for the World Bank only, how we translate that vision into homework for us on how we can support you into immediate next steps for the next month, two or three, to support this vision of what is basically a Maldives where growth and opportunity is the same, whether you're at the southern tip or in the northern tip. So uh, we are also ending, uh, we are also uh, about uh, to end the program. So before that, uh, how would we see the relation of World Bank and Maldives develop in under your tenure, both of you? Uh, and do you have any closing remarks? Well, uh, I very much look forward to CHIO. I'm uh, in my role as the country director, of course, I cover a number of countries. Uh, CHIO will be our uh, uh, chief representative here, and I have full faith in her ability to continue the wonderful relationship. I mean, we succeed others who have uh, done wonderful work here. At the end of the day, we orbit the Maldivian people. You guys lead your own development agenda. We are here to support you. So we are here, and our success will be a function of the leadership, which we have been seeing, actually, from the government. Moving forward, uh, I will turn to Chio to answer that. But from my side, nothing but full faith and support for her. And I'm sure she'll do a wonderful job, as she has been. Thanks, Faris. Uh, well, um, the, I would like, this time, uh, during this uh, short visit, I really uh, realized the importance of uh, human contact, although with the yeah. technology that uh, we have a uh, uh, opportunity to talk virtually, a phone call, internet, uh, quite uh, inexpensively. At the same time, that uh, still nothing really uh, re replaces the face-to-face uh, -face contact. So uh, I like to uh, come and visit regularly, uh, and so that we maintain the dialogue and relationship. And also uh, in uh, working together, that I, as uh, Harris mentioned, I like to uh, uh, listen what the government and people of the Maldives like to to have in there for their own country. Our, our job is uh, to, to help them realize that, that vision. And then also with us to see where we can help in terms of bringing some knowledge, expertise, or experiences from other countries, and they connect dots, and then to see how to, to find out the, the custom-made the local solutions for the Maldivians. So. But please continue to invite me to the Maldives. Once in a while, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, coming to our program and uh, giving this extensive information about World Bank and its works. Thank you. Thank you, Smile. Thank you All for having best. us. In today's program, we have discussed about the works of World Bank in the past and the future aspirations of World Bank in association with the Maldives. I hope you have got a handful of information about the World Bank's efforts in the country. This is Ismail Azim signing off from 750. Have a pleasant day ahead. Goodbye. Thank you.